just like the last video this one was also shot over my birthday so some of it had to be cut out To start off, I painted everything on the chassis in aluminium, then I just went back and masked it all off, and then shot it all in a semi-gloss black. I like to use the dull end of a toothpick whenever I'm defining my lines, otherwise that pointy end will poke through. And masking doesn't turn out too well and it's got a bunch of holes in it. I just follow the same order for the transmission pan, the oil pan, and the front control arms. And the sides. Basically the only thing that was black was just everything that was the actual bottom. I didn't like how clean all this looked so I went back over it with some panel line accent. And you may or may not see but I am rolling the Q-tip. This stuff has so much thinner in it that if you scrub on it like that or rub it, whatever, you're gonna peel some paint off. So it's better just to roll it. The exhaust on this is supposed to be flat white. And the only flat white I had was my primer. And it looked so good. I just left a lot of the exhaust in primer. I had to cut out me painting this because it didn't go so well. <laughs> but uh, basically, I just masked off the exhaust bits up there, painted it all silver, masked that off, then went back and painted the frame black. You'll see it later. And this right here is why I did the interior video first, because it had to be assembled to install in the chassis. If you watch any of my previous videos, you know that I have a very specific method for doing this. I don't try to slice them off. I just put the blade down and press down on it like a guillotine. Doing that just seems to get a cleaner cut on the little nub thingies, and it don't deform your parts. There is a fine line here when installing these. You want to bend the bottom control arm just enough and bend the upper control arm just enough to slide that in there. If you bend one way too far to try to install it, it's going to snap it off. I did that on the driver's side. Well, I guess on this car, it's the passenger side. This rack and pinion was another thing I had to cut. It was really easy to install though, it just it's not strong enough to turn the wheels, it just bends. And this part had broken whenever I cut it off the tree. However, it was a very clean break. It was still easy to install. Everything's got alignment pins, so I guess I got lucky here.
that's it really I'll just tack it in with a little bit of glue it very clean easy break and for as easy as these end caps were to install I don't know why but I had so much trouble just popping this in place And here is that transmission assembly all painted up like I talked about earlier. However, whenever I went to go test fit it, I forgot there's glue in place from that bottom control arm that had broken, so it got stuck in place. So you didn't get to see me install it, but you get to see me struggle with this battery. Yeah, one last bit. I think this is the last of it. The last bit that had to get cut was just me putting in those frame rail thingies that hold up the spare tire. When you cut these off, leave the nubbins a little bit long because that is what locates inside the exhaust collectors. And I say that, and yet on this very last one, I had to cut it real short because the hole in there wasn't very deep and it wasn't allowing me to line it up on the bottom. And for me, right now, it's a bit easier just to cut it short than trying to drill it out to the proper depth. This rear window, just as easy as a seat. It literally just pops into place. Now I forgot why I extended this bit so long and what I was trying to explain, but it must have been important, so I left this extra long bit in. Let's talk about this engine cover for a minute. When I was doing the unboxing, I was chastising for Jimmy for cheaping out and doing that. I wanted an engine. The real car had this because they were trying to hide a secret weapon they were hiding under the bonnet. That secret was mechanical fuel injection. So the 330 P3 and P4 series did not have a visible engine. That's it though guys. History lesson over. I'm going to be moving on to the rest of the body next so stay tuned.